sure plants are good to look at and we need them for food, but I'm going to show you how to use them for fertiliser, as soil conditioner, even pesticide. I love plants, but I don't just grow them because they're beautiful or productive. Some of the plants I grow help me to grow other plants, like this. This is known as the Southern Cone Marigold, Stinking Roger, Tegetes minuta. And by digging this into the ground, I can control nematodes. Now, nematodes are real pests in a food garden. Their feeding on roots causes plants to suffer and die. Now, the nematodes create swellings which look like this. Some gardeners mistake them. They think they're beneficial nodules, but in fact, these lesions are tumours and they impair the plant's ability to take up nutrients and water and it really sets back your crops. But by growing these marigolds and digging them in, I can fumigate my soil and the crops that would otherwise suffer from nematodes are clean. All you do is to spread them over the soil, chop them up if necessary, dig them into the topsoil, water the soil and keep it damp for the next three weeks. This dampness allows the marigolds to release the gas that kills the nematodes. If the soil dries out, it won't work. Now, to tomatoes. These tomato roots are clean. They've not been attacked by nematodes, but these have. And you can see the tumour-like growths on them. A few years ago, I had problems with nematodes on my tomatoes. So I cleared the vegetable garden, sowed some French marigolds, dug them in, and it worked. Since then, I've discovered that Tegetes minuta is even more effective. But that's not my only strategy. Other complementary techniques for controlling nematodes include crop rotation, improving the soil by adding composts or manures. This encourages predator nematodes that eat the pest nematodes and growing break crops, like corn. The nematodes we're dealing with can't get their nutrition from it, and they starve. There are no pesticides that will control these nematodes. So you've got a choice. These organic remedies, or you've got nematodes. Now it's time to harvest my chickpeas, but the seeds aren't the only useful part of the plant. You might notice that on the roots, there are little swellings. And these swellings are good. They're nodules. This is where nitrogen-fixing bacteria live inside the roots of legumes, like chickpeas, and they fix atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into nitrates. And those nitrates become available for plants to feed on when the roots rot. If you remember, a while back, I sowed this bed with chickpeas after it had been planted with Jerusalem artichokes. The Jerusalem artichokes are still dormant. The chickpeas have come up, and instead of pulling the plants out, I'm going to cut them off, leave the roots in the ground, so the nitrogen feeds my Jerusalem artichokes. It's not a lot, but it's enough to save about a handful or two of poultry manure, and that helps my fertiliser bill. Part of good gardening is improving the quality of your weeds. Growing unbidden in this bed is flowering tobacco, Italian parsley, cosmos with its beautiful flowers, and amongst the pineapple, warrigal greens. Warrigal greens grow so profusely and abundantly in this garden, it's impossible to eat it all. So the surplus goes into my compost heap, where it breaks down so fast, it's a compost accelerator. So in this garden, Stinking Roger is my pest control, chickpeas are my soil fertiliser, and warrigal greens, used as compost, are my soil improver, all of which save me money. No wonder I love plants. Music